Hey there. One of the keys to solving equilibrium problems is organization. So a lot of times equilibrium problems can seem like they're all over the place and there's a lot of stuff coming at you. But if you can organize the information, often they're a little bit easier to work through. Uh, for many equilibrium problems, one of the easier ways to organize that information is to set up a table. So let's take a look at an example and uh, see how we can work through that. All right, so here we've got a, a pretty typical equilibrium problem. You're studying the equilibrium formation of the trichloromanganese 2 ion by the following reaction, chemical reaction given there, manganese plus two aqueous plus three chloride ions aqueous gives us uh, manganese or trichloromanganese manganate 2 um, ion. If you combine 12.52 milliliters of 0 0.6173 molar manganese plus two uh, aqueous solution with 22.57 milliliters of 0 0.7162 molar chloride ion solution, you find that the equilibrium concentration of trichloromanganate two ion is 0 0.1037 molar. What is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? <clears throat> so we're looking for an equilibrium constant. We need to do that fairly regularly. Um, one little note, that parenthetical statement at the end is important. Uh, assume volumes are additive. All that really means is when we mix everything together, we can assume that the total volume is equal to just the sum of the volumes of everything we added in. Um, that's not always strictly true when we're actually doing an experiment, but for the purposes of this, uh, we're going to assume that the volumes are additive. So how are we gonna get started on this? Well, fortunately, we already have the balanced chemical equation. So let's see if we can sort of use that to build a table to organize our information. So manganese plus two, aqueous plus three chlorides aqueous gives us trichloromanganate two ion whoops oh, there we are let's get that back on screen there we go um Aqueous. All right. Well, let's start by looking at the initial conditions, the conditions we have at the start of this reaction. And let's figure out those concentrations initially. So let's start out with initial concentrations. Now, because we're assuming that volumes are additive, we can treat these like uh, just like a dilution problem, right? So looking at our manganese information, well, we've got the initial volume or we've got the, the stock volume, we've got the stock concentration. And because we're assuming the volumes are additive, we know the total volume. So let me just jot that down to the side here. I'll throw it in a little bit different color as well. 12.52 plus 22.57 is 9015.3. So there's my total. Uh, there's my total volume. So let's go back in and figure out our initial concentrations for everything. So manganese, I've got 12.52 milliliters times 0.6173 molar all over 35.09 milliliters. 
I'm going to go ahead and set these up and I'll plug, plug in calculations later. Uh, for the chlorine, we've got 22.57 milliliters times 0.7162 molar all over 35.09 milliliters. And what about that product? Well, if we're doing the reaction as it's stated, initially, we have no product. So we've got a zero there. Zeros are really nice when we're doing equilibrium problems because, well, they're zero. We can, um, we can somewhat ignore them. So let me plug in those so we can get actual numbers for our calculator for our concentrations. 12.52 times 0.6173 divided by 35.09. This is 0 0.22025 molar. Uh, formally, that's too many sig figs, but I'm in the middle of a problem. So I'm going to carry an extra sig fig just, just because. I'll round at the end. 22.57 times 0.7162. Thirty-five point zero nine zero point four six zero six six molar. Those are my initial initial concentrations for the equilibrium problem. So they were in pretty good shape. Um, let me move this up a little bit. Won't be able to see the problem, but we know we're looking for the equilibrium constant value. All right, so that is my initial set of concentrations. Let me put a little divider in here just so that we can keep things separated. Next, I want to think about what's going to happen when I let this equilibrium occur, right? So what I've done right now is I've kind of set up something that's not realistic. I've set up a system where I've mixed everything together, but somehow I'm not letting the reaction occur. We know physically that won't happen. As soon as things are mixed, they'll start to react, but we're on paper. So I can do this on paper. Those are the concentrations I would have if I mixed everything together, but I didn't let the reaction happen yet. Well, now I'm gonna snap my fingers and do my chemical magic wand and make this reaction occur. And when this reaction occurs, what's going to happen? I'm going to have some change in concentration. And how much is that concentration going to change? Well, I, I don't really know. But I sort of do know, because let's look back at the balanced chemical equation. When this goes to equilibrium, right, I'm starting with that amount. And in the balanced equation, when this goes to equilibrium, I'm going to lose some of that, right? This equilibrium is going to go to the right. It's going to proceed towards product. So I'm going to lose some amount. Let's just call it X. Right now, we don't know what it is, but Let's just call it X. What about chloride ion? Well, from the balanced equation, I'm going to lose three times as much X because every one manganese is going to react with three chlorines. So no matter how much manganese I lose, I'm going to lose three times as much chlorine. So I'm going to lose x, I'm going to lose 3x. What about the product? Well, I'm going to gain x of that. And again, I don't know what x is, and that's okay. That's really the key to figuring out these equilibrium problems is thinking about the change and being able to think about the change without knowing an absolute value of that change from the beginning. So, Let's take this one more step. And now, 
what are my equilibrium concentrations? Well, my equilibrium concentration of manganese is going to be 0 0.22025 minus X molar, right? That minus that. My chloride concentration is going to be 0 0.46066 minus 3X molar. And my manganese concentration is going to be zero plus X molar. So now we know our equilibrium concentrations, at least we know our equilibrium concentrations in a relative sense. So let's set up this equilibrium expression. Let me shrink it down a little bit so I can fit a touch more on the screen. My equilibrium constant expression for this reaction is concentration of manganese or trichloromanganate plus two ion raised to the first power over manganese ion concentration raised to the first power, and it's an equilibrium concentration, and chloride ions raised to the third power. Well, all right. What can I do with that? Well, I can go ahead and plug in my equilibrium concentrations that I just figured out. So I've got X, right? Cause that's that concentration. Manganese concentration is 0 0.22025 minus X to the first. Chloride concentration is 0 0.46066 minus three X to the third. Hmm. Well, I still got X, that's an unknown. And KEQ, that's what I'm trying to find. So that's an unknown. So I'm kind of stuck. But let's look back at the original problem. Let me just scroll back up here for a moment. Ah, there's something that's helpful. Find that the equilibrium concentration of trichloromanganate 2 ion is 0 0.1037 molar. Hmm. 0 0.1730 molar. But we just found out that the equilibrium concentration of the trichloromanganate 2 ion is, well, is. X. So now we have a way to figure out X. We just figured it out based on what was given in the problem and by organizing our information in a table. So if X is equal to, and let me jot this off to the side, 0 0.1037 molar. Well, now I can plug in that value and KEQ is equal to 0 0.1037 over 0 0.22025 minus 0 0.1037 to the first, to the first, and 0 0.46066 minus three times 0 0.1037 cubed. Well, now that's just a bunch of numbers. We can evaluate that. Um, it's a bunch of numbers, it's a bunch of messy numbers, uh, but 
it's still something that we can evaluate. So let me go ahead and plug that into my calculator and see what I come up with. So three times 0 0.1037 equals negative plus 0 0.46066 equals, and let's cube that right away times the quantity 0 0.22025 minus 0 0.1037 equals one over times 0 0.1037. So the equilibrium constant is 265.9623. And a couple things. Um, first of all, when you're plugging that into your calculator, uh, make use of the parentheses a lot. So most calculators have a parentheses function to group things. Make sure you're grouping things and grouping them correctly. Um, for something like this, I also use uh, my one over x button because the denominator here, the bottom is a fairly complicated expression just because there's a lot of numbers. So I actually evaluate this first, then hit one over X, that makes the denominator multiplied by 0 0.1037. So uh, just some calculator tricks to get you there. So there's my value. I do still need to go in and make sure I'm good on those sig figs. Let's do that in our typical orange. So I've got four sig figs going in with that number. Um, and looking at both of these, the result here is going to be to the fourth decimal, or yeah, to the fourth decimal place, excuse me. Um, and when I do that subtraction, the fourth decimal place is going to be four sig figs. So four there. And here I've got three, that's going to be 0.3. Yeah, that's going to be four sig figs there as well. So rounding this off appropriately to one, two, three, four sig figs, I should report this as um, 266.0. And that's my equilibrium constant. Um, now, the important thing, what does this equilibrium constant tell us? We can crunch through all the numbers, but we need to know what it means. What does it mean if my equilibrium constant is 266? Well, it's greater than one, which means that it is a Reactant favored or product favored equilibrium? Hmm. Make sure you know which way that goes. So there's that problem. Uh, and just an example of working through an equilibrium problem by setting up a table to organize all of our information. So make sure you practice those. Make sure you look at a lot of those. Um, different types of equilibrium problems and always let me know if there are any questions. So have a good day.